You are listening to audio from the Decidedly Podcast. This episode is a highlight clip from this week's full episode. To listen in on the complete conversation, see the show notes for the link to the complete show. You can help us out by leaving us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. We appreciate every bit of your support. I'm Morgan McKittrick, your producer, and this is Decidedly. So what types of systems do you put in place that will help with the, you know, I'll call it decision fatigue of just all of the chaos that goes around? What systems are you putting in place that help with that? Yeah, that's such a good question. I think I love the philosophy of just deciding once about things so you don't have that decision fatigue. So a system can help you do that. So for example, with meal planning, if you have to decide every night at five o'clock what you're going to eat. You know, are we eating out? Are we eating in? What are we going to have? Like, there's so many decisions that come into play. You have to do that night after night after night because you always have to eat, right? Or, you know, and multiply it by breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's a lot of decisions to make. So, if you can have decide once and have a meal planning system, then that really changes the course of your week. So, for example, on Sundays or the weekend, I end up making um, a meal planning list where I I have, I have already a framework in place. So Mondays for us is always a soup and a sandwich. So the soup changes, you know, and this is our winter menu. The soup will change, the sandwich will change, but I know I'm going to have a soup and a sandwich. So it takes away just starting from a blank slate of like, what are we going to have tonight? And then Tuesday is Mexican. Wednesday, we might have fish. Like I have something for every day of the week. So then it's really easy to, meal planning doesn't take me long at all, you know. I just, and I use some apps and technology that make it easier for me. So I'm not having to reinvent my grocery list every week. I'm not having to search for my recipes. Like they're all contained within an app. So I can plan out even my whole month if I wanted to in a matter of like 20, 30 minutes. It's it's really streamlined now because I have systems. Yeah, Sanger, Sanger and I have both used that. I use that, you know, one of those meal services that, you know, that they chip you the box and then you cook it at home. And that has helped so much because we don't have to go through that decision of what are we having tonight? What are we doing? What are we fixing? Where are we going? You know, and playing that game that I play with my wife, you know, where do you want to go to eat? Well, I don't care. I'll have about this That's place. Right. No, not That's there. Right. You know, so <laughs> just, just to be I do down. that. Right. I'll do that but, yeah. with myself sometimes. <laughs> There's no one even I'm even talking to. And it's like, do I want Chipotle? Uh, you know, and, nah, and I've, maybe been, I don't. I've been in a situation before where I've, I think this happened a few months ago. I got it. I was like, well, do I want to eat at home or do I want to go out? No. Well, I want to go out. Uh, Where am I going to go? And then I played that game in my head, you know, three, four, five restaurants. I got in the car. I drove. And then as I'm driving down the street, I'm like, I'm going to go to Chipotle. Nah, I make a decision (laughs) on a whim to drive right past that. I ended up doing a loop over the entire west side of the city, coming back home and eating stuff that was in my fridge. I go, what did I even do? (laughs) <laughs> this was such a waste of time. I spent 30 minutes driving around town, spending gas for no reason. Right, right. Yeah, and it, you know, even if you eat out, if you decide if that's on the plan, like on Wednesdays we eat out because, you know, you're carpooling kids to sports games or whatever. It's just a, de- a planned decision that you already have. And, and it's not like you can't vary it like you're talking about, Sanger, but it does help just to have a framework in place so that, you know, it doesn't feel so overwhelming to start the task. I think a lot of times systems, if they get too complicated, then people avoid them. And so like what you said, Sean, of having a meal delivery, that's as simple as you can make it to have dinner show up every night, right? And so you've simplified that for yourself. And now you don't even have to waste energy thinking about it. They just tell you what you're going to have, you make it and it's done. And you've saved all that mental energy that you would have otherwise, you know, caused you some frustration. I think part of what makes what you're recommending so helpful is that when we have an abundance of options, we are not actually making one choice, right? When you're deciding where to go for dinner tonight, you're not deciding, you're not making one decision. You're making maybe 10 different decisions. You're deciding is when are we going to eat dinner tonight? (laughs) Then you're deciding, do we go out or do we stay in? If you said that we're going to go out, well, then it's what type of cuisine are we going to 
get what type of restaurant are we going to have a casual dining experience are we going to go out and sit down and have a waiter and then you're narrowing it down and narrowing it down so you're making a lot of category categorization choices so the decision to say hey i'm going to go out to you know bob's diner for dinner it took you about five choices before you actually arrived at bob's diner yeah, and that's the why there's decision fatigue, right? It's exhausting. And a lot of times that decision can fall on one person, which makes it even more exhausting because it's just one more thing added to their mental load. Um, so it really helps to just have those decisions made ahead of time. I also think when you make systems and put systems in place for yourself, it really helps you achieve whatever kind of goals you're going to set for yourself. So for example, if you want to be in shape and you want to work out and exercise, it helps to know that, you know, Monday you're going to, is going to be legs day, you know, Tuesday is going to be arms day, Wednesday is going to be stretching. Like if you, same thing, if you have a structure in place, you can still vary those activities in exercises on each of those days, but it gives you a focus and you don't have to decide. You can just show up and start exercising. And so that's going to move you closer to the goals. Whereas if you have too many decisions up front, a lot of times you don't even make it <laughs> to the gym or make it to, to exercising because there's just too many other decisions that get in the way. I think an example of this is, you know, when we look at r- reducing it, decisions the best you know becoming better at making decisions by reducing the number of decisions you have to make uh, we look at Steve Jobs and uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, even uh, Elizabeth Holmes who would wear the same things uh, we're not gonna you know, we're, every hey, day we don't almost. hold Elizabeth I, Holmes out as a <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying she's a successful <laughs> individual to <laughs> imitate she's, anymore she's known not for something good but she is known <laughs> Hitler had the same facial hair every day. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <geez. laughs> Streamlined. Focus on what mattered. Yeah, um, that's right. They're in, you know, I know people who, when they travel, they always wear the same thing when they travel on an airplane, right? I mean, that would make packing so much faster if you already always had a go to travel outfit, right? Or I think decisions like that, um, it really does simplify your life. And there's a reason that those very successful, high powered individuals have made that choice to just streamline their, their clothes. Um, I know there's, you know, a whole trend of having a very minimalist capsule wardrobe wardrobe where you just reduce the number of items in your closet to maybe 30 items a season or something, and then you just wear those things. So I think those are all an attempt, like you're saying, to reduce the amount of decisions you have to make and save your mental energy for the more important decisions. Thanks for making the great decision to listen in to this week's episode highlight. If you want more of what you just heard, see the show notes for the full episode. As always, for the latest decision-making tips, find us on decidedlypodcast.com or on Instagram at decidedlypodcast. And be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter from the link in the show notes. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review as well. We read all of your comments, so if you learned some decision-making tips today, let us know. Until next time, this is Decidedly. Insights, advice, and comments provided by Sean Smith, Singer Smith, and speakers identified as part of the Decidedly podcast should not be considered recommendations. Speakers not identified as members of Decidedly are expressing their opinion, and their statements should not be construed as reflecting the views of the Decidedly team. This podcast is produced solely for informational purposes, not personalized advice.